no way, shape, or form should anybody any think racist. it is racist. You be the judge. A black mannequin with painted lips, these figures with wigs strapped to the porch, and multiple Confederate flags of all sizes sit outside this home in the 2000 block of State Route 132. What would you say to someone who's driving by this and says that family hates black people? I would everybody. say, you know, everybody hates everybody, you know. It just yeah. depends on what you hate, you know, what you like. Louis Jones Jr. lives here with his father. He and his friend Tammy spoke to us about the display, saying it's been up for years. They went up, a few of them at one time, and then a couple more were added, but the flags have always flown. That's for our country. We ain't got nothing to do with race. We ain't racial. Jones tells me he's proud to fly the Confederate flag. The rebel flag, it, it's the not. Confederate flag. Yeah, it's not racist. It's for the war that we won, you know. Which war? The Civil War. And, and we is in the south or the north? The we north is north. in the north. So that flag would be the wrong flag to fly. Um, in some people's eyes. Jim Wenker has lived in Claremont County for most of his life. He says Lindale is fairly quiet, but some things are unacceptable. If he's doing something in poor taste uh, with something black as an effigy or whatever, that's, that's not appropriate. So back to the display. This is nothing but antique art. As for those black figures. All the baseball players on there are actual you know, from the first blacks that played the baseball game. They were asking specifically also what the black mannequin is supposed to represent. Oh, the, not like the mom of the, of the baseball players, basically. Rob, the people involved say they were just having an innocent snowball fight. We haven't had that much snow, and they say they just wanted to have some fun. But Cincinnati police say it was much more than just a snowball fight. What is the address of your emergency? Four or five black males that threw a snowball in my daughter's side of her window, hit her in the face, and they're screaming all kinds of cuss words. I like to make complaint. There's three, four black gentlemen and on the corner of West Liberty and First Avenue, smashing cars with uh, snowballs. Multiple calls into the dispatch center. One coming from a city snowplow driver whose truck was being hit. Rocks and chunks of ice. Those calls led to this cell phone video where 25-year-old Tyshawn Mayers and his 16-year-old cousin were arrested. Police officer harassing us for snowballs. Two police harassing us for snowballs. We spoke to the guy behind the camera, Tyshawn's younger brother, Marquez Mayers. It's a whole lot of cars that's probably got hit on accident. You know, we right here and across the street, so we, you know, it's a whole lot of snowballs throwing. So our, the snowplow probably did get hit. Police sent us this statement. It reads in part, we are actively investigating. It's more than just a snowball fight. Anytime a city employee feels threatened, we take that seriously. For one, it's snowballs. It's just like... I mean, now, if we was throwing rocks and throwing bricks and stuff at each other, now that would be a different. Or if we was out here shooting or doing something different, then that would have been a different situation. I would feel threatened, too. He wishes he hit record before the arrest so people could see everything, but he says it all happened so fast. And we thought that the police was going to come and be like, you know what, you guys just watch the snowballs, you know, try to have it on a side or something like that, you know what I'm saying? But nobody said that. They just took it somewhere else and just started grabbing. Tyshawn's wife, Brittany, watched as her husband was arrested. She says the whole thing has divided their community and pinned neighbors against them. I mean, I apologize for if your car got hit by a snowball, but I mean, when you sit back and think about it, was it worth all that, though? According to this court document, mayors began being belligerent during the investigation. He's charged with disorderly conduct, obstruction of justice, failure to disclose personal information, and resisting arrest. Like, I even asked him, I'm like, you know what, uh, what are we getting in trouble for? Or, or, like, you know, what's going on? They didn't even want to explain. They told us that they believe the lady before they believe us. Tyshawn did post bond. He was there when we did that interview with his brother and his wife, but did not talk to us because his lawyer advised him not do not to. He's due back in court in February. Bob, Trisha, the good news is that homicides are down in the city of Cincinnati when comparing 2018 to 2017. But if we're breaking those numbers down even further, there were 59 murders last year, and of those 59 murders, 24 are unsolved. 
Pope Dudley made these playing cards. On them, photos of murder victims whose cases are unsolved. It's as if I'm stuck in 2007, still trying to find out what happened to my son. She lost her son, Daniel Chaz Dudley, 11 years ago after he was shot to death, leaving a nightclub. His car was followed. He was a passenger in it. And uh, someone shot at the car, leaving my son murdered. Since then, it's been her life's mission to find his killer. And I tell a lot of families, it's not where you start, it's that you start. Founding an organization called You Can Speak For Me. It was my son, it was my child, and I owe it to him and to my family and to his children to be vigilant when it comes to finding out what happened to my son. I requested the data from Cincinnati police and went through the numbers. In 2018, there were 59 murders. 24 of those are unsolved. In 2017, there were 71 murders. 24 of those cases are also unsolved. The homicide department is making a very strong effort to solve your case. Look out in the community and ask them for support and help. I spoke with Cincinnati Police Lieutenant Steve Saunders over the phone. He told me, quote, they never stop investigating cases that are unsolved, end quote. You just don't hear about the cases that's getting solved, but you hear about the unsolved because those are the few that's left behind and those are the families with a, a voice want to know what happened. Now, the killings were scattered across Cincinnati last year, but the most happened in over the Rhine. There were six murders there. For a full breakdown of this story with all the victims' names, download the Fox 19 Now app and look for this story. Maytel Levy, Fox 19 Now. Maytel, thank it was a very emotional news conference, one of the most emotional news conferences I've ever been to. Coleraine Township Police Chief Mark Denny tearing up, talking about the legacy that Officer Dale Woods leaves behind. Dozens of officers were down here paying their respects, saying goodbye to him. We learned a lot about Officer Woods tonight. Here's a look at his photo. He's a father, a husband. He loved to play golf. He was also an organ donor. Chief Denny could not give us specifics about that organ donation, but he did tell us that someone did receive an organ from Officer Woods. Chief Mark Denny also describes him as a cop's cop, says he was born to work in law enforcement and belonged to the Colrain community. Then he says something like this changes the police department forever. I asked him how they move forward and he says they're unsure. They're going to have to wait and see how their law enforcement department moves forward from this because they haven't had a we death have in the Colerain Township Police Department since the 1900s and essentially none of the law enforcement officers who are there now were there when that happened. So Chief Denny again just unsure how they move forward from this tragic loss. This is the hardest thing I've done in 26 years as a police officer, and I pray to God this is the last time we do it. But uh, we owe Dale um, the dignity that he deserves from the, the life he led, and we will work hard this next week to make sure that this community understands uh, how important he was to us. Now you can really just feel the emotion here at the hospital, just a feeling of gloom and sadness uh, after what's happened here. Um, and the family has asked for privacy, so we'll, of course give them that privacy um, and be ready to talk to them whenever they are ready. For now, back to you. Rob, tonight Hillman School here in North College Hill is investigating what happened after a mother says her six-year-old boy was allegedly choked and kicked by a daycare employee here, but they aren't the only ones investigating. So are Cincinnati police. Red marks left across six-year-old Braden's neck, leaving his mother, Karina Bowman, in tears. At first, I was really, really, like, mad, and then... Two days went by and I was just like, you feel helpless. You can't like um, be with them every second of the day. Bowman says a daycare worker at Hillman School hurt her little boy. Lady pulled him out of the classroom and into the bathroom and she had choked him around the neck. Bowman tells me that worker took her son into the bathroom so she wouldn't be caught on camera. He was leaving the bathroom and she kicked him and he fell on the floor. And then he said he stayed there for a little while before um, before he could go back to the class. 
I reached out to the school director, Chesare Harbison, for comment. She emailed me in part, the school is investigating the alleged incident. The investigation is ongoing and all relevant and required protocols are being followed. The worker involved in the alleged incident has been removed from working at the school. As student safety is the school's paramount concern, the school will complete its investigation and take all steps necessary to maintain the safest environment for its students. She was doing this to him, like who else was she doing it to or if it was just him, how long was she doing things like that to him for? I asked the school for a job description of the daycare worker and was told she was a support staff member. While Bowman is happy with how the school is handling it, she has a message for you when talking to your kids. Just asking how was your day doesn't really mean anything. So we need to start asking bigger questions. Now we aren't naming that day, former daycare employee because we're not sure if she's been charged with anything yet. As soon as we find out, we'll update this story. Live in North College Hill, Maytal Levy, Fox 19 Now.